Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, and tonight I have some unusually important news for you. This coming week, in five different magazines, you'll be seeing a double-page advertisement telling you about Rexall's one-cent sale that starts October 19th. The biggest one-cent sale in Rexall's history. This ad will appear in Life, Look Magazine, the Saturday Evening Post, Collier's, and the Farm Journal, and it contains more than 200 items. All of them regular Rexall branded guaranteed merchandise. And all of them offered to you at two for the price of one plus a penny. These items and many more are available at Rexall drug stores throughout the country. So it's your big chance to buy twice as much for only a penny more. Watch for this ad. Check what you need in advance and use the ad as your shopping list. Remember... It appears this coming week in Collier's, the Farm Journal, the Saturday Evening Post, Life, and Look. And when October 19th rolls around, the starting date of Rexall's greatest one-cent sale, remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Bay Show. Written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Bay and Phil Harris. <laughs> The Harris family is going through its usual morning routine. The children are getting ready for school, Alice is preparing breakfast, and Phil is admiring himself in the mirror. <laughs> Suddenly, for the first time, he notices three gray hairs. There's a moment's stunned silence, and then... Help! <laughs> Alice, help, come quick. Oh, no, this can't happen to my crowning glory. <laughs> I can't go on with a tarnished crown. Oh, this is awful. Oh, for goodness sakes, Phil, what's wrong? Alice, sit down, dear, sit down. I've got something to tell you, honey. And, well, well, if you want to leave me after you hear it, you have every right to. <laughs> what are you looking so ter... Phil, is there another woman? I wish there was. No! <laughs> well, I mean, I wish it was something that trivial. Alice... Alicia? Yes. <laughs> Honey bun? My hair is turning gray at the temples. Oh, is that all? Gad, woman. <laughs> Don't you understand? <laughs> I'm prematurely gray. Prematurely? Let's face it, Phil, you're 40. Lots of people start turning gray when they reach 40. You didn't. <laughs> Let me finish. I was going to say you didn't have to remind me. Did something happen, Daddy? Are you all right? No, I'm not all right. I've turned gray. <laughs> Girls, I hate to tell you this, but... but your daddy is growing old. Very, very old. <laughs> Gee, that's terrible. Mommy... Does that mean you're going to have to take him to the old man's home? <laughs> I suppose so. What else can they do with an old man? But, Mommy, couldn't we keep him here? He won't be a burden. No. We can take turns pushing him around in his wheelchair. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. I can still whip the three of you. One at a time. Oh, uh, Phil, stop acting ridiculous over a few gray hairs. It doesn't look bad. It, as a matter of fact, it makes you look rather distinguished. Doesn't it, girls? Yes, Daddy. You're starting to look just like Louis Stone. <laughs> Louis Stone? Oh, no. 
the irony of it. Today I look like Lewis Stone, and only a few short weeks ago I looked exactly like Mickey Rooney. <laughs> terrible about a few gray hairs. Don't you see? First it gets gray, and then you start to lose it. I got to make public appearances. When people see me without hair, what will they say? Good morning, Baldy. <laughs> if I have to lose something, why can't it be him? <laughs> now get away from me, Willie. I got enough on my mind. Something awful has happened to me. Oh, good. Tell me about it. <laughs> Nothing, Willie. He has a few... Wait a minute. I'll bet you won't even notice it. Look at his head. Do you notice anything different about it? No, it's just as flat as it ever was. <laughs> well, you two got a brother and sister act now? You... <laughs> Listen, all she wants you to do is to look at my hair. Your hair? Well, I'll be switched. <laughs> Hi-ho, silver top. <laughs> Now, you see, Alice, even little Squint Eye noticed it. I don't dare go out in public like this. Oh, now, look, Phil, if your few gray hairs bother you so much, why don't you go to a barber shop and have them touch it up a little? Oh, fine, fine. All I got to do is to let the guys see me in a barber shop and let them see me having my hair dyed. Why, they'd kid the shirt off of me. Oh, why should they, honey? Lots of men have their hair touched up. Jack Benny goes there every week to have his hair done. Yes, but you don't have to sit there while they're doing it. <laughs> now, look, let's face it. I don't want them guys to find out about it. Well, uh, then why don't you go to my beauty parlor? Phil, I have a 10 o'clock appointment with my hairdresser. I'll, I'll let you go instead, huh? You want me to go to a dame's barber shop? <laughs> let them do it. Well, I'd be embarrassed in one of them places. Oh, you won't be embarrassed. Nobody has to know that you're going, and nobody there knows you. No. Uh -uh. Sure. <laughs> well, if nobody knows I'm there, and nobody's gonna know, but... I guess it'll be all right. Anything. I'll go. All right, good. I'll, I'll call the beauty shop and tell them you're coming in my place. And in the meantime, honey, you'd better get started. You only have a half hour to get there. All right, I'm gonna leave right now. I ought to be back in about... I'll get that. Hiya, Curly. Hello, Frankie. I can't talk to you now. I'm in a hurry. Where are you going? I got a 10 o'clock appointment at the beauty parlor. <laughs> <laughs> well, la di da <laughs> I got a good reason to go to the beauty parlor. Don't apologize. <laughs> Perfectly normal for the man of the house to go to a beauty parlor. <laughs> go on, you run along. Look, Frank. I'll stay here and talk to Alice while she shaves. <laughs> Curly, why are you going to the beauty parlor? I know that sounds like a stupid question, but I'm anxious to hear your stupid answer. If you must know, I'm going because I... Wait a minute, I'll see if you can tell. Now, look at me closely, Frankie. Mm -hmm. Look at my profile. Mm -hmm. Do you... Do you notice anything different? Yeah. You're starting to get another chin. <laughs> I've had two chins for a long time. I'm talking about the third one. I think it's very attractive the way your chins cascade into your chest. <laughs> Never mind, will you? I imagine when you drool, it looks like a babbling brook. <laughs> Look, will you forget about my chins? It's my hair I'm concerned about. Oh? Frankie, time has come. I'm getting gray and, and I'm terribly worried. Feel awful about it. Well, there's no reason to be depressed. Come on now, chins up, old boy. <laughs> Look, Frankie, I'm going to the beauty parlor to have my hair just touched up. Now, will you do me a favor and come with me, will you? Well, okay, I'll walk over with you. Thanks, pal. Hey, Alice, I'm going now. I'll see you later. Uh, oh, uh, while I'm gone, you may sing. Thank you, Master. Gee, he's so good to me. Look 
What you done, what you done, my baby? Look what you done, what you done, my child. Look what you done, what you done, my baby? You done gone and told me a lie. You told a lie, I believed you. Look what you done to my heart. You told a lie, I believed you. I was a fool from the start. I thought that you and I would be together. I never dreamed we would part. But you told a lie, I believed you. And look what you've done to my Look what you done, what you done, my baby. Look what you done, what you done, my child. Look what you done, what you done, my baby. You gonna told me a lie. I thought that you and I would get together. I never dreamed we would part. But you told a lie, I believed you. Say, uh, pardon me, madam, uh, madam, madame. Yes? Uh, I'm Phil Harris. Uh, my wife called and made an, an appointment for me. Oh, yes. She said you wanted your curls dyed. <laughs> uh, yes, that's right. What do you want to become, a brunette, a redhead, or a platinum blonde? <laughs> You'll be a wise hairdresser, huh? <laughs> I don't want to be a brunette or a redhead or a platinum blonde. No, we were thinking in terms of midnight blue. Uh, madam, I just want these, these few gray hairs just, just touched up a bit to, to, to match the rest of my hair. And, and if you don't mind, I, I, I don't want anybody else to know about it. Well, very well. Just step into this booth and I'll call Lucille. She always takes care of Mrs. Harris. Thank you, and remember, I, I'm trying to keep this quiet. Oh, don't worry. I won't tell Lucille who you are. Now, you just lie back in this chair, and I'll put this sheet over your suit and this towel over your face. There. You're completely covered. Now she'll never know who she's waiting on. How do I look, Renly? <laughs> Like a sloppy mummy. <laughs> now, now, I'll, I'll get Lucille. Lucille? Yes, Mrs. Matthews? There's a customer waiting for you in booth three. I'll go right in. <gasps> oh, it's 10 o'clock. That must be Alice Bay. Oh, I love to do her hair. She's such a nice person. And she's so pretty and young looking. Wonder how she does it at her age. <laughs> oh, well, more power to her. Oh, there you are. Hello, dearie. Hi, honey. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Miss Faye. Miss Faye? That it? Oh, you mean Alice on the cheek there. Mm. How are you, Miss Faye? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I better get started on you. You want the usual, Miss Faye? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you sound like you got a cold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gee, I hope you'll be able to sing on your radio program Sunday. I'd hate to have to hear your husband sing two songs. <laughs> what the heck is the matter with that? Well, Alice. 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 Well, what's your Alice. 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 Alice.
You'll blow a gasket on your girdle. <laughs> Lucy, you've upset Miss Faye. She likes to hear her husband sing. In fact, she insists that he sing on the program. Yeah, I understand. It sort of makes it look as if he's earning his own living. <laughs> uh, look, uh, Luce, never mind the conversation. Just get to work, huh? All right, yeah. all right. I just want to arrange this sheet around Miss Faye's feet so I... Miss Faye! Hmm? I hate to tell you this, but your legs are getting awful hairy. <laughs> Them. You're getting bow-legged. I am not bow-legged. <laughs> Miss Faye, you're a man. <laughs> oh, wait till I tell Luella Parsons about this. Thank you. Let's get out of here before this whole joint knows what's... Come on, don't stay with that woman. Get out of here. After you, dearie. Ladies first, you oh, know. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, Remy, what am I going to do about dyeing my hair? No matter where I go, it ain't going to work because people are going to recognize me. Well, why go anyplace? Let's dye it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you know a guy, huh? Oh, look. Huh? You mean... Yeah. Sure we can we can use a well-known dye, I can't do any harm You leave it to me, I'll buy the dye You go home, wash your hair and get ready Okay Gee whiz, Frankie hmm? I hope the dye works If it... Well, don't you understand If it, if it don't work, it's going to ruin my career Why should it? You still have your glorious voice <laughs> True <laughs> I might even go in for serious singing I could be another gray-haired baritone like Enzo Pizza. <laughs> Some enchanted evening you may meet a stranger. Why knock him out of a living, huh? I better stick with my own racket. <laughs> Drag people boast and consistently drink a toast to a place that a lot of the place at the top of the heap. Are they wrong? Are they right? Is there reason for their delight? I must live in doubt till the day that I find out. Is it true what they say about Dixie? Does that sun really shine all the time? Do them sweet magnolias blossom round everybody's door? Do folks keep eating possum till they can't eat no more? Is it true what they say about Swanee? Is a dream by that stream so sublime? Do they laugh? Do they love like they say in every song? If it's true, that's where I belong. Now, if you like to hear that southern drawl and gals who say I love you all, there ain't no use for you to stall. Just get on down to Dixie. Now, if you like that sweet Magnolia Lane and gals as sweet as sugar cane, then hop the nearest choo-choo train. It's all aboard for Dixie. I'm going to pack my shoes and walk and stick, my cotton shirt and my banjo pick. If you need me, you can reach me quicker. We down south in Dixie, cause it's true what they say about Dixie. Uh-huh, that sun really shines all the time Yes, those folks are really living where old man river flows They live on watermelon and honeysuckle rows Uh-huh, it's true what they say about Swami You can dream by that stream so sublime do they laugh? Do they love across the Mason-Dixon line? Yes, it's true. And it's mine, all mine. Now look, Remley. Before you start mixing that stuff now, let me ask you one question. Are you sure that this dye you bought, you sure that it ain't gonna hurt my hair? Well, how can it? It's one of the best dyes on the market. What's the name of it? All-Purpose Writ. (laughs) 
That's wonderful stuff. Yeah, the label says, uh, guaranteed not to harm the most delicate fabric. Then that's for me. <laughs> it's not because my hair is made of the most delicate fabrics available. <laughs> well, let's get started. Mm. Ah, I pour the dyes into this Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dyes? Hmm? You got more than one? Well, I have to. <laughs> Couldn't get any dye the color of your brown hair, so I bought four different colors. I'm going to mix them. <laughs> what colors? Red, green, chartreuse, and fuchsia. <laughs> this makes brown? Sir <laughs> tenez moi. Now, I pour them into boiling water. First a little green, now a little red, a dash of chartreuse, a pinch of fuchsia, a jigger of rum, and butter size of walnut. <laughs> Nutmeg to taste. What are you trying to Curly, do? Curly, you're not going to drink this. I ain't going to put it on my head either. <laughs> it's an awful looking mess. Well, you... wait till it boils a little longer. <laughs> there, that's better. Well... You can bend your head over, Curly. I'm ready to die. Well, go ahead, I'm too young. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Lindley. I'm going to tell you right now, you ain't going to get my head near that thing. Curly, you can't hurt you. Just try it. Try it on somebody else. Why are you picking on me with uh, it? I wish you had a dog. We, we ain't could got try no on. dog. Hiya, fellas. Well, if it ain't little wire hair to bruise you. <laughs> Think we ought to? Sure, his fur looks a little mangy. <laughs> Come here, Fido. Over on this side, please. What are you characters up to? Oh, we're just cooking up a little, um, um, we're cooking, um, uh, a little spaghetti sauce. Oh, and what spaghetti sauce? Curly, bend over. Smell that. Gladly. Yeah. Oh, this is exquisite. Mmm. <laughs> now, Frankie, it's your turn to bend over and smell it. Okay. Oh, what a heavenly aroma. <laughs> now I suppose it's my turn to bend over. <laughs> if you wanna. I don't wanna. Oh. <laughs> Ain't no get me to taste that stuff. But Julius, we don't want you to taste it. All we want you to do is just... Go soak your head! <laughs> <laughs> He's catching on. <laughs> Got the right idea, but the wrong head. <laughs> hey, kid, believe me, we don't want you to taste it. All we want you to do is just bend over and see if it smells all right to you. All right, as long as I don't have to taste it. I don't smell nothing. You will. Dunk them, Ramley. Yeah. <laughs> We hold him under. The directions say soak him for five minutes, but this is just a trial run. <laughs> Let him up now. We'll see how he looks. Pull him out. <laughs> You're boiling my little scalp off. <laughs> Stop beeping. It ain't boiling. How's his hair look, Curly? I can't tell yet. Wait till the smoke clears away. <laughs> hey, Frankie. Huh? Something went wrong. The colors didn't mix. Well, that's right, they didn't. His hair is four different shades. <laughs> yeah, his head looks like an argyle sock. <laughs> hey, sock head, come here, man. Get away from me, you fiend. Ain't you done enough to make dunk in my head and hot spaghetti sauce? But, Joe... <laughs> hey, he was a Halloween job, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, sir, we died that egghead early, didn't we? <laughs> you know, come to think of it, his head looked a little bit like a chef's salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm ready for you now, Curly. Just dunk it. Hold <laughs> going to get my head in a technicolor mess. <laughs> Look, I'm going to go upstairs and see if Alice hasn't got some good dye. I'll be right back in a minute. Yeah, oh, Curly. I'm not going to... Hey, Curly. 
Oh, I wonder what went wrong. I know I can get the right color for Curly. If I can only find somebody else to test it on. Mommy, we're home from school. Mommy, where are you? Mommy! Why not? It can't hurt him. <laughs> Alice can always wash it out. Oh, girls, come on in the kitchen. Uncle Frankie has a big surprise for you. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Uncle Frankie. Our hair looks beautiful. Yeah, but I still haven't got quite the color I want yet. I love the color you gave me. It's a bright, flaming red. <laughs> and mine is a very unusual Kelly green. <laughs> That's still not right. Red and green ain't exactly what I'm looking for. Hey, Remley, Alice had a dye and I'm red. Remley, who brought them traffic signals into the... <laughs> traffic signals. They're young ladies. Colorful little midgets, ain't they? <laughs> what circus they with? Daddy, it's us. Oh, no. Oh, no, Remley. What have you done to Phyllis and Alice? Oh, you poor kids. Your hair is such awful colors. What are we going to do? Change their names to Aurora and Borealis. <laughs> well, I guess I've done all I can to help. So long, Curly. Come back here. If I ever get my hands on you, Remley, you've hurt my children. I'll do something like Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But right now, our Rexall family druggist has a question to answer. I want to know more about the ad on Rexall's one-cent sale. Well, ma'am, the ad appears this coming week in the Saturday Evening Post, Look, Life, Collier's, and the Farm Journal. And it contains more than 200 items offered to you during Rexall's one-cent sale at two for the price of one plus a penny. That sounds like a pretty big sale. It is, ma'am. The biggest one-cent sale in Rexall's history. Think of it. Two big magazine pages crammed full of twin bargains. All regular Rexall guaranteed merchandise, and all of them going at two for the price of one, plus one cent. Now, in front of every item, there's a little square so you can check what you need in advance. Why, I can use the ad as a shopping list. That's exactly what it's intended for, ma'am. It's your big chance to stock up for months in advance. Or you can team up with a friend and share the savings. Because when October 19th rolls around, the starting date of Rexall's one cent sale, you double your buying power by simply adding a penny. Where did you say the ad will appear? In Life, Look, Collier's, The Saturday Evening Post, and The Farm Journal. Remember to watch for it. And remember also, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Frankie, how could you do anything like that to the children's hair? I'm sorry, Alice. You know I wouldn't do anything to harm the kids. I was just trying to be helpful. Never mind, Remley. You're going to wash the girl's hair until you get all that dye out. Now get going. All right, I'll get it out. Hold still, Phyllis. Daddy, my head feels tight and my hair's getting awful stiff. Oh, well, that's nothing, Curly. That's just from the starch I put in the dye. <laughs> starch? Yeah, I figured I'd dye their hair and set it at the same time. Oh. Watch for the double-page ad on Rexall's one-cent sale appearing this coming week in Life... Look, Collier's, The Saturday Evening Post, and The Farm Journal. Sale starts October 19th. Your chance to buy more than 200 fine quality, guaranteed Rexall products at two for the price of one plus one cent. <laughs> It's the adventures of Sam Spade, coming up now on NBC. 